You're stepping into the world of minimalist footwear, intrigued by zero drop and barefoot shoes. But what's the real difference between them? And more importantly, which is right for you? I'm Houston podiatrist, Dr. Andrew Schneider. In today's video, we'll discuss these two shoe types and explore the pros and cons of each, helping you to make an informed decision. But before I do let others know about these videos, please like, comment, hit the subscribe button and share on social media. This will help others find this information. Zero drop shoes have level soles that offer a more natural foot position and enhance comfort. They mimic the flatness of your bare feet, promoting a healthier stride and reducing stress on your joints. They've been designed to optimize your running style by encouraging a forefoot strike rather than landing on your heel. Zero drop shoes also allegedly contribute to stronger feet muscles as they allow more ground contact. This in turn fosters improved balance, agility, and proprioception. What sets zero drop shoes apart is how they combine these benefits without compromising cushioning or protection from terrain like barefoot shoes do. They offer just enough padding to absorb shock while still providing you with that close to the ground sensation. Ultimately, zero drop shoes could be the perfect compromise if you're keen on transitioning from traditional footwear but aren't quite ready for full on barefoot shoes. Comfortable yet functional, they provide an excellent foundation for developing a natural gait. When walking or running, barefoot shoes force you to land on your midfoot or forefoot rather than your heel, which is healthier for your spine alignment. You'll notice how this change significantly reduces joint stress and strain. Barefoot shoes heighten sensory feedback from the ground, enhancing proprioception, the awareness of one's body in space, vital for agility and injury prevention. So if you're an athlete seeking peak performance or a fitness enthusiast desiring optimal wellness, going barefoot could be beneficial. Don't let the term barefoot mislead you. These shoes still offer protection against sharp objects and rough terrain while allowing maximum freedom for foot movements. Transitioning to both zero drop shoes and barefoot shoes require a change in your running stride. It's a process to break old habits. While they're often grouped together, minimalist footwear and those designed to mimic being barefoot aren't the same thing. You've probably seen zero drop shoes in your local sports store, but have you ever considered how they differ from barefoot shoes? Zero drop shoes maintain a flat profile, keeping the heel and forefoot at an equal distance from the ground. This promotes natural stride alignment and can help reduce injuries caused by abrupt heel striking. However, these shoes still offer some cushioning and structure, something that differentiates them from their barefoot counterparts. Barefoot shoes, on the other hand, offer little to no cushioning or arch support. They're designed to let your feet move as naturally as possible while providing a minimal protection against rough terrain. The aim is to strengthen your foot muscles over time, a concept known as natural running. Understanding these differences is crucial if you're considering transitioning away from traditional running shoes. So remember, zero drop means flat but padded with support, while barefoot means minimal padding for maximum freedom of movement. Choose wisely based on your preference and your physical needs. Zero drop shoes or barefoot shoes are not recommended for everyone. Individuals who have specific foot conditions such as plantar fasciitis, bunions, or flat feet should avoid using these types of shoes. These conditions require adequate support and conditioning to manage pain and prevent further complications, which minimalist shoes cannot provide. Additionally, if you're used to wearing traditional shoes with elevated heels, suddenly switching to zero drop shoes can cause discomfort and injury due to the dramatic change in foot positioning and load distribution. Barefoot shoes can pose significant risks due to their lack of support and minimal cushioning. They can lead to painful conditions of the foot, including metatarsalgia, a condition characterized by pain and inflammation in the ball of the foot. Also, the lack of arch support can exacerbate conditions like plantar fasciitis, a common cause of heel pain. Ankle and knee pain can also be a result of using minimalist shoes. 
particularly for those who are not accustomed to the altered gait pattern and increased impact forces that these shoes can cause. Furthermore, barefoot shoes increase the risk of stress fractures, especially among runners. This is because the foot and leg muscles are forced to absorb more shock during foot strike, as opposed to traditional running shoes, which are designed with cushioning to absorb much of this impact. This increased demand on the muscles can lead to fatigue and overuse injuries, including stress fractures. Therefore, before making the switch to minimalist or zero drop shoes, it's highly recommended you consult with your podiatrist to assess your suitability and reduce the risk of potential injury. The best candidate for wearing a zero drop shoe would be an individual who's an experienced runner with a natural running style, prioritizing form and technique. This is because zero drop shoes mimic the natural foot position, promoting forefoot or midfoot landing rather than heel striking. They're also suitable for individuals with strong arch support and those who are looking to improve their foot strength and balance. However, it's worth noting that transitioning to zero drop shoes should be done gradually to avoid injury. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Please take a moment to like, comment, and share on social media. Be sure to hit subscribe so you won't miss another, another video. If you've been having trouble transitioning from conventional running shoes to a zero drop or even a barefoot shoe, it's time to come into the office. First, we'll check to see if your foot is suitable for that type of shoe. And if it is, we'll be able to coach, coach you through the transition from one shoe to the next. The link to request an appointment is in the description. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.